hello, welcome to the podcast. Uh, my name is Margit. I'm a German who is living since two years now already in the beautiful countryside of Norway. And um, yeah, I welcome you to my podcast and I think, I hope I will make it work now with this uh, camera because I use my phone instead of my laptop. Um, but the problem is that my phone uh, constantly tries to adjust with the, the brightness uh, and when I look away enough then the face detection <laughs> doesn't detect my face and it just goes with the brightness to the background and so the whole picture gets darker so I have to look always in the camera <laughs> To make sure there is not so much variation so i hope this will um work jesus this is really does it work at all i don't know um so i recorded today quite uh spontaneously because um i don't know it was hard times i think it's already now three or four weeks the last time i recorded and uh i had to make much decisions and yeah so I didn't have the energy at all I didn't knit like anything um, uh, until I started like one week ago yeah one week ago I started to work on an old project I'm going to tell you about today and um, and then I made a lot of mending so um, I thought I would just take the chance now uh, that I feel with quite some energy today it's beautiful weather outside I just came back from a short walk to record and just see how it goes so I didn't plan a lot so uh, my idea was I want to talk about shawls um, which is uh, because the project I uh, took up again is a shawl and uh, I had some thoughts about shawls in general I would like to share with you and also some of my shawls I knitted in the past. So, and then uh, my, my second idea was I want to talk about uh, spinning because that's what I also do a little bit in between all the time and yeah, maybe in the end, maybe not. I, I don't know it yet. So, but let's talk about the, the shawls. So, First, I'm going to show you my work in progress shawl and this is a very big, big shawl and I'm almost finished with it. Where's the back? So this is actually, let me switch it around. This is the front side. So, and it is, you see, this is the the start the tip and you can see it starts like with two sections so you have one section is the lace section um maybe so and the other one is just plain uh, garter stitch and it's like um this border is go so the increases are made on both sides so it keeps like this um what is it? It's the symmetrically. That's the word I was looking for. And um, it grows, it grows super big until, until, <laughs> until you have that point um, where you actually stop increasing on the garter side and you just uh, increase on on the lace side and since you also all the time since from the start you decrease in the middle every second row uh, one stitch it happened that the when you knit on that it happens that you kind of decrease uh, no you, you actually you decrease two stitches in the middle every second row so you decrease plainly one every row uh, average so it happens then you kind of decrease the garter stitch again because in the middle you always take 
every second row you take one yeah, every yeah every second row you take one away from the garter stitch and one away from the lace stitch in this middle one kind of a seam almost and the lace section will grow 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 and will in the end you have uh almost nothing left for the garter stitch and you kind of decrease 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 and when and when the lace section hits the end it's done <laughs> magic huh <laughs> so that uh, shawl is a pattern from uh, melanie berg it's a german knit designer and she also published some books i think from so, so she's quite uh, known for her uh, shawl designs i think she also made some some garments like uh, at least I know she made one sweater um, but oh hi, yeah <laughs> um, but uh, mostly she's uh, famous for her shawls and um, I knitted that shawl with uh, with another German um, yeah German located wool um, yarn so it's uh, a Volmeise lace yarn and that is that is um, hand dyed um, in Germany and the meterage I think of this so this is like 150 gram is one skein of yarn and uh, they come, the metrage is saying it's 1,700 meters. Um, yeah, I will put it somewhere in the screen. So, but it's like really, really, really a big skein of yarn. And it's, okay, I would say it's almost like on the, a little of heavier lace side. Like it's not very, not super thin. So, okay, that's the side. I can show you this one that's the thickness and whoo, and that is my leftover ball i also increased actually i made one more repeat i increased the pattern uh, because i didn't want to have so much leftover of this so i calculated and i found okay i can increase one one of the pattern repeat and that means because i have to decide it like uh before that turning point how much i want to grow it and depending on how wide it is already on the turning point it depends how much i have to decrease so it means if i make it wider i have also to decrease more which also consumes yarn so i had to uh, calculate that a little bit and uh, but i didn't calculate it so that i would be at risk to run out of yarn actually um, so I think I will still have some little bit left over actually this looks much smaller than I <laughs> was thinking of so <laughs> I'm not so sure now but yeah I mean uh, it's only a few stitches here left which means um, only a few like how many rows? Let me check my chart. It's about nine row fifteen, and I have to make twenty four. So it's like uh, six more rows, and then I have to bind off. Um, I think that will be enough. And um, I started that project. Uh, last year I knitted a lot of this last year in summer uh, yeah I forgot to mention the name actually the name is uh, Secret Keeper and also uh, what I like is the back side I don't even know which one I like better but uh, it's very hard to see let me try to get the background here maybe my pillow uh, because this light shines through and you can't see a thing right so this is yeah that's good 
So you see also the yarn is quite variegated. Um, but it's not too much, I guess, for a shawl. And since you have the shawl anyway, like mostly quite wrapped, you wouldn't see so much of it. But that is the back side again. So you have this straight lines going in a stockinette. And then in between you have this lace pattern. And uh, the, actually the front side is like this. And uh, it's also very pretty. Like nothing against. And uh, what I liked um, about that one is um, I think it fits very good with the yarn since it has, uh, it gives a lot of drape. I mean, that yarn is very, very drapey. I'm not sure at the moment if this is superwash treated or not, but it's very drapey and um, especially with hand dyed yarn, I like to have it in a, in a garter stitch because I think that shows off best the little color differences. Let me put this on the pillow again. Quite nice to have that on the pillow to show. I should... Yeah, yeah, I think you can see it really good. Um, no, now it gets dark again. Have to see my face detection. <laughs> Um, no, hi, hi, hi. Okay, there we go. So, and I thought that would uh, be a very nice project to have like a, an engaging pattern, and the pattern is really engaging. So, um, it's not. It's not that it is difficult. I don't have any markers here in between for separating the lace um, repeat, which is every second stitch. Um, but you have to focus. I mean, I can't do this without looking on it the whole time. I can do the garter part, but I cannot knit the the lace part without uh, without looking at it at all because there's a lot of yarn overs and uh, knit two together SSK and also um, um, like a two stitch like a centered stitch degrees so uh, that is a lot of yarn manipulation to do and uh, I got a bit tired of that project so I had it in the bag now the whole autumn and the whole winter time. And um, yeah, now I, now I put it out again and that time where I couldn't like really, you know, concentrate on anything new, on any new project, on design, I couldn't decide on any new project to start and and that one was, it It took me like one, one row, uh, less than one row. And I was back into the pattern and I remembered how it was, uh, what I had to do. So it was uh, just very easy to pick it up again. And I'm also very happy to finish this soon. It's a bit warm here, so. <laughs> We have it warm today. All right, so this is the big, big shawl project I'm uh, working on right now. And um, that made me think of um, actually how much will I use it and what do I use it for and, and what did I, what what changed over the past? Um, what changed over the past years? You can say uh, since I since I knitted shawls and and that's quite a thing because um, I have another shawl made from wool mice. I'm going to show you now, and then I will try to find the right words. What I'm going to say. <laughs> 
so this is the uh, Charlotte or Ch Charlotte, Charlotte, I don't know the English, so Charlotte, Shawl, uh, I don't know now the designer, I can put it in the screen later, um, but it's, um, I think the whole name is actually going off for a walk with Charlotte. Yes, and uh, since in my Stitch and Witch group, uh, we have, uh, uh, some of us have knitted that, uh, have knitted that pattern as well, and some of us had it even knitted it more than one time, I, I will just refer as this to Charlotte, it's just, <laughs> it's just shorter. So it's a triangular shaped shawl and the other one I was just showing is like an asymmetric, long, elongated, like very long triangular shawl and this is a symmetrically to the center triangulate shawl and it is has increases on the center bone, you can see it and um, this is over two meter long I think and it's also from Boy My Celais yarn and um i don't know what colorway that is but i remember now just as i think about it this colorway is the mont blanc mont blanc like the mountain and uh that one i don't remember it's quite an old and it has this little you know oh yeah my pillow I put it on the pillow is this little star stitch or I don't know how it's called I call it star stitch because it looks like a little star or a little flower also okay what's going wrong here with this yeah there we no okay I hope I can edit this uh, later with this changing light um <laughs> Okay, my camera doesn't like this change here, um, but I think you got you got an impression of it. So, and what happened when I wear this shawl? And this is one of the most the shawls I most wear, uh, I most uh, have used. And when I have this shawl on. I used to have it on first like that, that that way like a lot of people do it you have it kind of the triangle like in the front like this almost like this cowboy style you know and then you can have it like because it's quite long I usually put this back and make a knot here so and uh, I mean that worked quite good it also can be like this but uh, what happens when I have this for longer on and I am inside, um, uh, I get kind of a tension in my neck and in my shoulder uh, for some reason because of this weight. <laughs> and uh, so I get then, even I get also pain sometimes because of this tension and uh, that's not so nice. So what I did then, later, I turned it that way. So I have it had it the tip in the middle on my back, and then I wrapped it around here and to close it in the front, and that was much better working. Um, but still, uh, it is like because this yarn has quite a lot of drape cannot have it like um, easily uh, like higher and hide my my face under it uh, because it will just collapse and it will yeah it just doesn't doesn't work and I, di I didn't even know that this was a disadvantage until I knitted another shawl Um, which is uh, which is the Aito shawl from 
uh, be mandarins or like yeah Le melody hoffman is her uh, is her uh, name uh, designer's name and uh, the aito shawl is also a triangular shawl but it's a little bit asymmetrical and it has like a garter panels and then there come okay it will start actually at this other edge at this point so you start at one point of the long triangle point and you start at uh, garter and then comes the lace part and then comes the garter again and the lace part again and so on and you decrease on one side so you get this big triangular and then you just yeah when you kind of done you bind off and um, you can use practically you can use up all the yarn or you stop when the size is good and that one is made from Pretolupi yarn and uh, what is really cool on this one is it is uh, so uh, because the yarn is unspun yeah so that means the fibers are not twisted and therefore they are not uh, put into a denser volume like like there's a compared to the weight it's very much volume in the in the thread already so which makes also the yarn kind of very much stiff as all these little pieces of the fiber stick out and they will kind of you know um <laughs> work against each other so they don't so like the the knitting don't collapse so dense in itself and uh, when i wear that one you know it's like you can see it already it's naturally it is like covering half of my face already just without any effort like i put it on like this i love that way put it on and i wrap the the ends under or sometimes i put it like one end in the back and secure it there somehow you can also have it like a little, little bit little bit on the side and i mean in germany when i was there i probably didn't need that so much protection of, of my face in the winter time or in the cold in the cold seasons um but here in norway <laughs> it's uh it's 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 so much better to have um also a shawl like this for outside which covers um, half of my face and yes and it's it's very lightweight i don't feel this weight on my shoulder i don't get so easily um tension in my neck muscles and my my upper shoulder like here on the on the top of my shoulder these muscles and uh that's uh that's the thing i just found out with that shawl so now i know that my next shawl i will knit is one that has more dead properties with um i will knit it also with an unspun yarn that's for sure i didn't decide on the pattern yet and i will probably knit it also like that shape and so that makes me think actually how much will i use my work in progress secret keeper shawl um but um i don't know so what i also like to do with the charlotte is to have it like um just as like like a blanket like not a sh not a shawl like a blanket in the back like this and then i wrap it around uh and i make a like a wrap it around like this and make a knot here in the back or better even in the front but it's actually a bit too short the end because when i have it in the back i have this uh bump <laughs> of the of the knot there and that's when i lean back on uh, on the seating 
uh, this will be not so yeah not so comfortable like so and I thought maybe that would be something I can do with the secret keeper shawl I need a sip of water Yeah, but this is something, you know, you probably only find out until you, yeah, you knitted it and you wear it. So um, anyway, I'm happy when I finish the shawl, so it's kind of not laying around uh, there and waiting to be finished and I can get my needles out <laughs> to use it for something else yeah i think that's good yes and i think i will finish this shawl today or maybe even uh no uh, this weekend i mean today is saturday when i record this and so either saturday or tomorrow yeah and then i want to show you another one i made another shawl it's more like a it's a very small shawl well, compared to the others, it's small, but it's it's long, but it's not so deep. So there's no pattern name. Um, this is very long and it starts uh, very thin and this uh, the yarn is, uh, I don't know the name, I have to look it up. I will put it in the screen, but it's um, a merino silk. I can feel this. It's the silk in and it's hand dyed by my friend Claudia and it's dyed in a color a pillow uh, which is blue and green it has like green stripes in oh, it's very hard to get huh can you see that no oh my god this is so annoying yeah <clears throat> Let me try it that way. Let ah now we work. I have to keep my face in. And you see there are a lot of blue and then there's some green stripes and you know this is so nice. I this is maybe my most worn shawl and it's very long but it's not very thick. And what I did here, it is actually, I just went with a, like a basic pattern shape, uh, pattern, sh uh, sorry, uh, with a basic shawl shape, um, which uh, starts on one tip and then you increase very slowly it's actually the same type as the i2 shawl uh, you start on one tip and you increase ah yeah i think i remember now you increase on one side and in the other side you decrease but you decrease it's like you make more increases than decreases so it will grow but it also will move sideways right yeah i think you know what i mean and um, that's how it becomes so long but not so deep and uh, I really like that one because it's just when it's just a little bit cold on on my neck I can put that on you should put it on like with the triangle like in the front but I put the other layers all over and then since it's not symmetrically, I have always one longer tip, which I put like on the side and then I hide this one tip in the back. And then I have it like this and yeah, this is really nice. Like when I have a jacket over, this is like small enough to have the, the collar of the jacket around usually and um, or even without a jacket so this is really nice 
So I go with I went with this um sorry I'm a bit jumping from topic to topic. So yeah. So I was going with this basic sh uh, shawl shape pattern for increasing it and then I put in a very very simple eyelets that are um, arranged sorry that side is the right side that are arranged um, with four eyelets like a little flower right at least for me <laughs> so that is um, I called it a uh, Streublumenwiese. This is a German word for. Yeah, what it is. It, it means like you have a meadow with f flowers and they are all kind of, you know, distributed. Mm, yeah, somewhat distributed coincidentally like yeah I don't know if there's a word uh, translation but let's say it's in English it's like um, flower meadow yeah maybe <laughs> and um, I like this one really really good and I think I want to make also another one as this is um, because the shape works so good for me and it should be a yarn that is quite slippery I think and um, so it, it has a nice like a drape I don't remember I knit this I knit this on yeah, this was a one skin project and I knit this I think at least at least on four millimeters I guess and uh, I knit the secret keeper I knit on four millimeters now and I think also with the Charlotte I knit that on four or maybe three and a half this looks so dense actually yeah um, but this is much more loose knitted so um, it's more uh, like this if you compare it from the light like this looks oh, wait does it look more or not yeah this is more airy this is more less dense than the other ones whatever that's for the shorts and I knitted also more shorts uh, which I also gifted to family uh, members uh, at least two or three yeah I think that's it for today I enjoyed it really much oh maybe one more thing be before we finish what do I wear I wear my wagon cardigan bolero from Isabel Kramer and this is so cool. I knit this with 100% silk, Tusa silk from Dye for Yarn. And um, this grew a lot. I changed this lace pattern here with another one I like better. Um, but uh, besides of that, I, kept, I stick to the pattern. And um, what I really like on this, uh, you can wear it. Um, also upside down like I would say this is actually the wrong side up <laughs> um, so that you you get like this this little collar here and it will end as you can see on the back it will end just around my natural waistline in the back now and um, it's like kind of very white sleeves here um, it's like a bolero and I could wear this probably to a dress I don't know why because I love to wear dresses and I can't remember I didn't wear it a lot with dresses but yeah it would be very very practical you can even have it like with a little 
you know, maybe so like a knot in the front, like this way, if you like that, and the other way around, it would be to have, yeah, now I can show you the, when I have it off now, this is a stockinette stockinette stitch um which is half of the back and the other half is the lace pattern and the stockinette is also continued in the sleeves <coughs> so. <coughs> and um uh, let me see if i can get halfway up because the ceiling is um I know it's the problem in the face. So, you know, you have it like open. Oh, it doesn't work. Oh. Hi. <laughs> yeah. Um, but you see now a bit of the pattern, maybe. Um, I'm so sorry that this is not working, but um, I put this setup on because I wanted to have this nice background. I think it looks so nice it's my attic view and um, I wanted to share with you that's why I had it now that way and I didn't think it would be such a problem with the light but you know um, you see that here goes the sleeve and here goes the lace and it's um, yeah you wear it open you know you have no closure um, in the in the pattern and um, it's very nice so that's it for the day uh, thank you so much for listening and thank you so much for all the comments I um, I really appreciate that and yeah you can find me on Instagram under little cabin knits as well as on where we where you can also find the patterns i i published so far which are only three <laughs> but i'm very proud of them so um check them out if you like and uh maybe we see us next time i would be happy to have you around here again and share some other stuff with you have a good day bye bye Thank you.